Grace and peace. I am Pastor Renee T., the pastor of Enon United Methodist Church in Studley, Virginia, just out from Richmond. You know, I went to church yesterday without knowing. I knew that there had been unrest, and I certainly knew about the murder of George Floyd. I knew about those things, but I went to church without knowing. And as I was leaving church or getting ready, one of my congregation members made a comment that I, I, I noted, and then I went and started really looking at what was happening in the city just a few short miles from me. I went to church, you see, without knowing. And when I got home and I found out, I started realizing what all was happening around me. And I have to say the weight settled on me heavily. I read a meme or something that, that I thought summed it up perfectly that 2020 was the year with no identity. And then it picked up a little bit of 1918 and a pandemic and it skipped on over to 1934 and a major depression, economic depression. And then it popped on up to 1968 for civil unrest and rioting in the streets of the cities across the country. And on top of that, we were watching the SpaceX um, rockets and I was all excited about that until I realized that that wasn't my country either. That there weren't little flags painted on those rockets. It wasn't our accomplishment, it was something a business was paid to conduct. I had walked around really without knowing. And by the time I got up this morning, I just had this giant long list of things, you know, of things and it, it looked out from where I was sitting, it looked like everything was broken. I mean, there are health problems and economic problems. You know, we figure 30% of the country is unemployed. There are just these massive things happening and they're happening everywhere. And I can't, I can't do anything about it all. Sometimes I walk around without knowing. And the truth of the matter is, at the end of the day, I think I, most of the time, I don't know, for I'm not in charge. But I read a devotional this morning, and it's um, through the upper room, and the author is Jackie King. And she wrote a poem, um, It Hurts So Much. First Thessalonians 5, verses 16 through 18. Rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Wow, that's not where I was. Rejoice, pray, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God for you. Jackie King's poem. Today I prayed, I cried, and I talked to God. I asked, Lord, what do you want me to do with what I am seeing? In the midst of it all, I called out the names of the persons killed over the last 21 days by hate and brutality. Today I prayed, I cried, and I talked with the Lord. I asked Jesus, what do you want me to do with all that I am feeling? In the midst of it all, I prayed with many people and invited them to pray as we called out their names. Today I prayed, I cried, I talked with the Holy Spirit and walked around the block to catch my breath as I thanked God for the breath of life, the tears rolled down my face and my heart pounded. I asked, Holy Spirit, what do you want me to do with what I am hearing, how I am feeling and what I am really seeing? In the midst of my prayers and tears, I could hear my grandmother's voice saying, baby, you are seeing, feeling and hearing the pains of brokenness all around you. Yeah. It, it hurts so much. 
I rise from my tears to say that we are called to continue being God's church right where we are. Act justly, love mercifully, walk humbly. He has shown you, O mortal, what is good, and what does the Lord require of you? To act justly and to love mercy and to walk humbly with your God. Micah 6, 8. And as I read these words, and I thought about the tears I've shed for all those who are suffering with and dying of COVID-19, and I thought about all those who are yet to suffer and yet to die, and I thought about all the grief associated with that suffering, and with that death. And then I thought about all those unemployed people and the people who had those restaurants and businesses that they had barely gotten open only to be met with riots and vandals. And then I thought about the rioters and the, I thought about the rioters and the vandals and the hopelessness that they must have felt. The people risking tear gas and rubber bullets and and all of this out screaming with their hoarse voices. And I thought about the fear of the mamas of the little black boys. And it was just too much. I thought about the things that I dreamed my country would be, what I used to think it was, and now I find out that it is not. And I can do almost nothing. And so I engaged a little bit of that hopeless, helpless despair garbage. And then I reread this scripture. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. And this is what the Lord requires of you, to act justly and to love mercy and to walk humbly with your God. None of those words say that I'm responsible for all of these other things. They don't mention carrying the weight of the world. God has the weight of the world. I have specific directions for what I'm to do, and if I allow myself to be overly burdened, if I don't leave the weight of the world at the foot of the cross, that I am so burdened I can't rejoice and pray and seek God in all circumstances. I can't love justice and act mercifully because I become overrun with hate. Join me in breath prayers that can help. Remember last week, God is with me. I am not God. God is with me. I am not God. Maybe you need to write another one. The world is in pain. I turn it over to God. The world's pain. I turn over to God. And then seek God's will and what you can do. Do something you love. Do something that you enjoy. Pray for others and then leave the prayers at the feet of God. And then I thought about this hymn, He Leadeth Me. He leadeth me, O blessed thought, O words with heavenly comfort fraught. Whate'er I do, where'er I be, still tis God's hand that leadeth me. He leadeth me, he leadeth me, by his own hand he leadeth me, his faithful follower I would be, for by his hand he leadeth me.
He leadeth me, and he leadeth you, and he leadeth the world. Gracious God, we pray for our world, for our country, for people that are so fraught with pain and hate. We pray for those who are sick and those who offer care. We pray for the unemployed and those desperate to pay for their basic needs. We pray for the hungry children. And we pray that we'll hear your still small voice calling us along the path of justice and mercy and peace. Amen. <laughs>